and uh, you so yeah you there this is um 2d animation for um scientific illustration as well So with scientific illustration, um, you have to be uh, like careful with how much you can go get what you'd call creative liberty to be messing with the colors. And uh, my internet just died. Can you hear me? I believe my connection Can you still hear me? Yeah, my internet is just having issues. That's why I'm trying to get it to work again. I believe it should be working now. Can you hear? Is, can you guys hear me? Is the voice still not going through? Okay, you can hear now. Okay. So I was saying that um, we would be discussing like um, how you try to keep scientific accuracy in the art without it becoming um, boring or dull to look at. And it's a bit of a careful balance, but there are a lot, I mean, it does not mean you have to make boring art just to be scientifically accurate. Like you can see um, this person paints very vividly colorful and um, interesting pieces, but they all follow the scientific accuracy. So um, here are some more uh, 3D animations of um, whatever this is. I'm not actually sure what this is. <laughs> and uh, people make very interesting infographics on planets. And I will share these. Um, links in the chat if any of you would like to um, see more of their work. And I'm also, uh, for this particular workshop, I'm going to be going over how I research the topics, because a big part of making um, accurate scientific art will have to be the research, because if you don't know what you're making, you cannot make it very accurately. Can you still hear me? It's saying my connection is bad again. Okay. So um yeah, so to for I picked a topic beforehand for this um for this workshop, and we're gonna be looking at this very interesting mushroom species that is one of the largest, it is a single organism and that covers like several acres of distance. It is a very interesting specimen. I'm not sure if any of you um, remembered that other forest, which I mentioned on Instagram. 
but uh, this is one of the largest living organisms in the world and so i'm gonna uh, we're gonna see how i can we can research this topic and um what are the key points that you want to keep in mind when making any illustrations for it because you have to choose with the amount of detail that any single organism has which are which are the most important ones to show in your art so for example uh if i just pull up just give me a second So for example, in this sketch that I've made here, um, the most interesting part about this particular organism was its very complex root system because it is all its roots are connected. And if I show you actually a picture of it, that's much better. So this is the this is by all appearances is just a normal forest, but you want to choose the more interesting part of it, which is which is the intricate root system. And so you want to research that and choose what part of that you're going to be showing in your illustration. Uh, okay, so when I initially pick a topic, I start with good old Google. So I'm just going to Google up whatever um, or organism that or whatever subject I'm looking to sketch or illustrate. And sometimes I just Google vague topics and try and get inspiration. But since I've already chosen for this, I'm not gonna, that is a very boring process. So you don't really wanna see it. But mostly um, you just, I had to Google and Wikipedia is a good place to start for research. You have to be careful because not all the information is accurate, but you just pick, um, follow the citations and you'll get good um, websites where you can um, read more about the subject that you want to uh, illustrate. So when I'm looking for, when I'm looking for um, the part, the details that I want to be sketching, I I read for the description of the for this for this example the mushroom species, and I choose objects which are interesting. Like here it says the mycelium invades the sapwood and has this black rhizomorphs, which is a which looks like an interesting thing because it is the main thing that allows this mushroom to spread over the long distances. So I'd say that, okay, let us go and research more about these rhizomorphs and what are rhizomorphs and how do they work? So we can see that there's, we can see that this is how the um, mushroom species spreads everywhere. And it is the root system basically of the mushroom and from there I also put up these few interesting websites about um, how this fungus managed to grow over like acres 15 hectares according to this website so um, yeah that's the research process is basically the like it is the important part, but it is also the part that I don't spend too much time on. And I just dive right into um, sketching the... So after after you um, spend some time researching, for, for this thing, I thought I would actually go over how I um, drew the mushroom or painting techniques as well just give me one minute Okay, um, so um, for researching scientific illustration, you there are several good websites which you can start with. And here's this um, interesting um, website that has, it's like an entire guidebook to fungi. And here we can see a lot of information about how this mushroom species is spreading. 
And I think this would be a good starting point for making a sketch of this mushroom species because these, um, the black strings or rhizomorphs as they're called, are a very distinct feature of this mushroom. And so I'd say that, okay, let's go and pick this one and um, like explore this detail of the mushroom more. Have you got any questions? You can unmute and let's talk since it's only you and me in this entire chat, in this entire call. Okay, no questions, I guess I'll just continue. Okay, um, so instead of trying to make a big project like drawing, illustrating all this entire species of mushroom, I want for this workshop, I'm going to go over a illustration that I made already. And I'm going to um, continue it from like a portion where I've already gathered the references and I've done my research on it. And we can get into the whole, um, the drawing process with the background research already done. So, this is the final this is the final um, image that we made that we're going to make and it is a it is like an information card basically for the mushrooms and we're going to start with the sketching process but you can see i've gathered um i've gathered uh, references in the corner here because you could try to blind guess it but that's not going to be very productive for getting scientific accuracy so you want to make sure you've got um good pictures which are showing the the subject in from different angles so you can make a illustration that is as close to the real life um, as possible these photos are not mine by the way they're just stock photos but since i'm not copying them exactly i can use them as references normally i'll just pull up a google search page next to it and browse them randomly but sometimes i just pick a few and use them specifically. Okay. Let me just uh, grab this thing. So initially when I start out, I generally have a very loose idea for these for these cards i know i have got like a template already ready i will have the information on the side and so the general how my image is going to look i have it figured out and i start by just playing around with um a very loose sketch of where i want the mushrooms figure placed i like to have for this particular one i wanted to have um a few different stages of its a few different stages of its development um, featured together to add like a bit of a added interest instead of just having one or two or three of the same. Because as you can see, it's changing shape as it grows in its different forms. Here we can see it's fairly flat and um, earlier on it's fairly round and sort of button-like. But as it grows, it's almost opening up into this table-like thing. So. I think that's very interesting and I wanted to show the different um, the different stages, the different shapes it takes in the stages of its growth. So this, this initial sketch is very loose. As you can see, it does not look anything like it should. And I just mess around and it's more like a, uh, I'm not sure what it is. It's more like just a sandbox, if anything. You will just uh, keep on changing it, getting different ideas, and you just want to make sure that you're keeping some sort of um, uh, like you should have a distinct. It should give the idea that you want to capture nicely. So like you don't want it to be so messy that you cannot even understand what you have made yourself. But you will be refining this as you go. So it's not something to take very seriously at this stage is the cleanliness of your sketch. OK, 
give me a minute. So for this one, I mostly wanted to just have three because three is a good number and I didn't want to make the piece feel cluttered. And so I just wanted to go with, uh, stick with three mushrooms, which is a good number. Okay, we've got somebody else joined, just joined. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Sorry to join so late. It's okay, no problem. There's only one other person for now. So okay. Right. Okay, so um I had I had gone over the portion where we're covering what scientific illustration is, and now we're going to be working on how I sketch and start drawing a piece. You can stay unmuted, I don't mind. Okay, but my kids might make noise. It's okay, I'll put I don't it mind. okay. So we're going over how I made um, this, this illustration. And I'm going to start, I was starting with the sketching phase. And then we're gonna, uh, since <laughs> making a complete piece oh, takes so long, I will, um, I will be breaking phases. So we'll go for, over the sketch and then we'll go over like some of the coloring and adding details parts. And um, then we will cover the lighting and closing the piece off in like phases. Okay. So to start with, I've got this very rough and very pretty looking sketch over here. Um, but at this stage, I really don't care how good it looks. And once I've got like a basic idea of where I want them, I'm just gonna lower the opacity to that and go over it again. And with each time I go over it, I'm gonna be trying to add, make it neater and also add the most important parts of the of the subject which i want to make sure that i have got covered in my final drawing Aisha are you doing this on photoshop yes i'm doing some photoshop okay if, can you if use any you can use anything yeah there are lots of free um software as well which you can use um, there's one which is quite popular. I think its name is Krita, like K-R-I-T-A, that lots of people use. That is also, I've heard good reviews of it. Okay. And there are other um, softwares, both paid and free as well, which you can use yeah. if you don't have Photoshop. Okay. I've got a weird eraser. Need a better eraser. There you go. So if I, um, I'm here, I'm correcting the general shape of the mushroom because in the first one I did, it's very wonky and bumpy. But if we look at the references, this mushroom generally keeps a very smooth um, structure in this phase of its um, growth. And there are no uneven bumps. So I'm gonna, cut down on those which I had in the initial one and then the sizing is also weird its gap is very huge but I think I have to uh, let's go over it again so I go over each sketch several times in fact I'm going to redo this entire one because it looks weird so I'll just erase it there you go and I'll go over it again so I like going over the sketch several times because I the first ones I do are always very rough. And um, 
going over it a few times helps me get a better idea of what I'm looking at and making sure I don't have very messy. And you see, I just changed the angle. It was facing away in the previous one, but I've already got two mushrooms which are facing away. And I don't have anything that's facing towards us. And this angle I think would be better for showing the cap as opposed to the other one. And I made it bumpy again. I keep making it bumpy, but that's what going over the sketch is for. Um, as you can see, I left the back end in and I like deleting it afterwards, the part that would not be visible because hidden by the rest of it. It just helps me um, keep the three dimensionality of it a bit better because I make very wonky shapes otherwise. Okay, I think this guy is very small. I'm gonna make him a bit bigger because he's supposed to be close. That's way too big. Okay. And then let's uh, go over the two back ones. I'm actually going to remake this one as well because I don't like its placing and it looks weird. I don't always erase them when I want to go over them. In fact, I hardly ever do, but sometimes I just feel like erasing it instead. Sometimes my sketches are a little neater than this and sometimes they aren't so when i'm sketching for scientific illustration i pay a lot more attention to the general shape and structure in this phase than i would um if i was just doing it painting for fun because i have to make sure that the proportions especially the size proportions and the general shape is more accurate than is as accurate as possible because those are the defining features of this of any like the between the different species you want to make sure that you have got a good um sense of realism and generally speaking this my does this painting that i end up doing is not very realistic as in it's very stylized and the lighting is very dramatic and i would not say it is photorealistic in the general sense but i want to still shoot for realistic proportions and colors as i mean i do push the colors slightly into a bit more fantastical i guess but overall i try and keep them more grounded than you would in more real than you would in just painting for fun In this stage of the sketching, you can be as messy as you want. We can always just refine it later and it's easier to be messy. And I'm going to sketch my third one over here and then move it because it's covering a part of the one at the back and that is very inconvenient. So I'm going to do the cap first this time because I want it to be angled, like tilted on the side and not doing the cap first is very irritating in that manner so normally i would use more references than the five that i have loaded in here and while i was painting i often just head over to google and look for references if i cannot find a specific position that i wanted to have for this in fact most of the time i don't want to load them into photoshop but it's easier sometimes Otherwise, just head to Google. Hey, we've got one more person now.
Okay, so um, I had already gone over the part of what is scientific illustration and how I research my topics for it. And now we're going over the, um, we're going over how I do the sketching and really um, I'm gonna go in stages until we can reach the final product, which is this over here. Okay, so um, I've got a site edge of the gills showing here, so I'm just gonna rough those in. And it looks very ugly. At this point, keep in mind that the sketch is not meant for others to see. So for as long as you can understand what these weird squiggles mean, that's okay. You just wanna get a general idea down and then you can go over the sketch and refine it and work it into a more uh, aesthetically pleasing sketch. Although I will do the stem over again because that is very bumpy and the mushroom does not actually have a bumpy stem. So at this part, basically all I focus on is making sure it is structurally correct and everything else can come later. And this mushroom actually goes over here in the final. So uh, I just sketched it in ahead because it is less distracting that way. Okay, um, I also work on the general composition of a piece at this stage. You wanna, uh, oops. So for this one, I had like the, this mushroom is going to be closer to the camera, you could say, and these are going to be further away. So you want to make sure that your scale is showing that. So you should have the one that is closer be bigger and the one that is further away be smaller so that you can give the depth in a realistic way. One more thing you could also probably do is sketch out a general like a uh, ground. I did not do it because I did not have much of a ground in mind when I begin, but uh, it can be helpful to add scale. So like you could just have a vague groundish thing. So once I've finished like this very first rough sketch, I turn down the opacity of the entire thing and I do a second pass over it. And with each pass, I aim to go for slightly more uh, accurate proportions and shapes and also I want to start neating it, neatening it down a bit because this is very messy and you cannot actually paint something off of such a messy sketch. The level of um, neatening I do for a sketch also depends on whether I am taking it to a full painting or not and I actually um, neaten a sketch less when I'm taking it to full painting. Uh, Somebody just tried to join and then left Oh well, um, I need it less when I'm taking it to full painting because um, I'm using I'm using Photoshop for this. Yeah, I was saying I, I need it less when I'm going for full painting because I know um, what I mean by these rough sketches. But for something like this, where the most I was doing, the most level of detail I was taking it to was just filling it in with color. I pay more attention to the sketch and neaten it down a lot more so that even when I turn off the color, um, the sketch is, the sketch still uh, speaks. Yeah, so you can see the lines are neater, thinner lines. They give more detail in just the lines than whatever I'm doing in this one because I, I'm just doing it to, enough that I can paint off of it. And that needs a lot less detail in my sketch than it would need if I was leaving it in the sketch phase. Does anyone have any questions? Am I making sense or no? Another part which is not very much shown here because it's a bit hard to show is the, the research that I do beforehand will be playing into the sketching process a bit more because the type of texture, for example, using texture as an example that it would have is a bit hard to capture with just pictorial reference. So you'd want to 
have read about it beforehand so you can uh, actually I think I made it too big it's probably better beforehand okay I don't like zooming in too much when I'm doing the sketching thing because you can lose track of um, the bigger the picture as a whole and th that is what the sketching is all about is keeping track of the picture as a whole but when these guys are all meshed up in each other like that i do zoom in because i cannot see them when i zoom out so because we're uh short in time i'm hoping to keep this like on two hours ish so i will not be finishing each stage of it to like completely and i will just refine the sketch i think one more step and then i'll jump over to where i already have a refined sketch and we'll start coloring it so that way we can cover the basics of all the different um of all the different stages without um spending too much time i'm gonna change this one's angle a little bit i feel it's tilting too much there and i don't like it so in this stage that is basically all you're doing you're refining the sketch and you're fixing any major flaws that you'd have so that by the time you reach the actual coloring or painting stage you don't have any huge um any huge changes that you want to make because it is harder as you add like say if i'd already reached this stage and then i decide that i actually want this huge mushroom to be tilting backward it's a very big shift to make as opposed to just changing a few lines in the sketch and i know that is a very exaggerated example but you just want to generally make sure that you've got a that you're not you won't be making major changes in your uh, in the composition or in the general design of your piece after you've gone past this stage and i'm going to turn this one off so i can see the one behind oops that's a huge brush you can use any brush that you would feel comfortable with by the way for the sketching thing I use this rectangle because I just like the way it makes lines, but I think a, a circular brush is a more common uh, choice. I'm exaggerating this little upturned portion here because I like exaggerating it. It gives a bit of a better feel. When I'm, when I'm thinking of the composition, I have a few things I keep in mind. And the first is that I don't want to clutter, I don't want to clutter the piece as a whole. The, so if I were to, for example, add, say there'd be a, another mushroom over here, and I would have like another mushroom way over there. And the it's it's I feel like that would be too many, that would be distracting. And I experimented with this a whole lot, and I like that three was a good choice for the size that I'm shooting for here and and then i'm placing one slightly ahead and the rest are the other two are slightly behind which i think adds like a good sense of depth it shows it feels like it's more than a just a static thing feels a bit more realistic does anyone have any questions now or not yet no i think Okay, am I explaining things in a nice way or am I not making sense at all? Hey. No, it makes sense. Cool. It, it makes sense. sense. Or is it the sort of, um, I don't have questions because you're making no sense and everything is flying over my head, so I'm just going to keep quiet instead. No, no, I'm, okay. I'm listening. Okay. So now that I've got this slightly better one, I just turned the one behind it off because I was way too messy. And... um. I think I'm actually going to leave the sketching phase off here and shift to the colors because I would, if I was, if I had more time, I would go over this a few more times because I can see here, I just noticed now that I was sketching this in a very weird way. And this, this particular one is not reflecting a accurate development phase. 
because it is halfway in between this phase where it's more rounded and this one over here where it's that's not when drawing where I'm trying to draw. Uh, and this one over here where it's more like flat and sort of uh, going inside by the middle and curving out on the edges. And my thing is just sort of going all the way around, but it is not rounding enough over this side. So I would be refining this more if I had the time. But since I already have a refined one, I'm just going to switch over to it and we're going to start the coloring process. So this is the sketch that I reached after I spent some time fixing it. And actually, before we continue, there's one thing wrong with this sketch as well. Um, I modified this later on while I was painting. And the stem of this dude is incredibly thick from the top. Whereas if we look over here in the references, their stem sort of curves inward by the cap. So I'm just going to fix that before I get to the painting stage. I'm cheating and using Photoshop's transform tools instead of drawing it again. But I mean, that's if you were a traditional artist, you would not be able to do that. But uh, since, you know, digital artist, it works. OK, I think that's slightly better. Yeah, maybe, yeah, that will do. It's not, OK. So before I get to the mushroom part, I like giving a uh, interesting background because this gray background, this brown thing is not very appealing at all. So I will choose a sort of greenish, brownish color. And I'll just uh, rough in a background real quick. I'm gonna zoom out. I do have a background painted, but I'm just going to show you how I do it. Yeah, that's very bright. That's still very bright. And it's very yellow. I don't exactly have, you could use for the colors, you could use a reference picture as well. But since for this, I'm not using the background is not a uh, is not the major focus of the piece. I do not have uh, references for the background. I actually, now I do have a reference because I'm using the finished one that I already painted for the one in here for a, back, uh, for a reference, but oops, wrong one. So I wanna put in a slightly darker part over here because Generally speaking, the part that's closest to the camera is darker than the part behind it when the light source is there. So another thing you have to keep in mind is that um, I put the lighting in a completely separate section. So we're going to go over the colors flat and then we're going to add the lighting in later. But a part of the colors also depends on the lighting. So you cannot treat them as completely different from each other. I don't know what happened there. I want to make this part darker. It's doing weird stuff. Oh, okay, there you go. So um, for before I start putting in the colors, I want to think about where the light in my picture is going to be coming from. So for this piece, I wanted the light to be sort of late eveningish golden light coming in from the sides. And because this mushroom typically grows in forests and stuff like that, I thought I'd have depot light beams coming in from the sides. And, but you can choose any sort of background you want. But what I'm trying to say is that you'd have to think about the background from before. Uh, sorry, about the light source from before you actually began doing the lighting part. So just in establishing the colors and background and everything, you wanna make sure that you have got a general idea. You don't have to think too much about it, but there should be like a general idea of, um, where you want the lighting to come from. Obviously, this is all adjustable later on. You can, if you change your mind, you just have to like redo some of it. But it is a good idea to have a idea before you begin. Anyway, I'm a bit far from my um, background colors. Apparently, they were rather greenish. So let's uh, make them more green. Uh, that just looks worse, but oh well. There you go, that's better.
Yeah, so I'm not spending too much time on the background and I'm just gonna turn on the layer in which I painted the background beforehand. And I guess that is kind of cheating, but whatever. So I added like this sort of grassy um, effect at the, a grassy effect in the closer to the camera. I'm not going over how I did that now because I will go over it again um, at the end when I'm finished up the coloring section. So I can show how I did the grass then. For now, we're going to start with the actual colors. Let me just turn, let me just turn the references back on. So a lot of people are, it is very tempting to color pick where you just um, grab the tool in Photoshop where you can pick colors and say, okay, let's just choose a color from here and paint my motion with that color. It is generally not a good idea because you want to have um, the accuracy, but because of how light and colors and stuff work, randomly grabbing a color from the picture will not give you very accurate colors. And also it will not, you will not learn more about colors as a whole. So most of the time you'd like to instead um, look at the colors in the piece, look at the colors in your reference pictures, look at the general color the mushroom has. Why am I zoomed in? Look at the general colors of the mushrooms and choose a color that you think would be a good match for the source, a good that would resemble the, the real life subject the closest and put a, put a test down. So for example, I would think that to match this reddish color of the mushroom here, I think uh, this sort of color would work for it. So I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna test it. And it looks very horrible for now. And I can tell that, okay, it is way too pink. The actual one is not that pink. So instead of just picking a color from here, I can say, okay, let's make it less pink, slightly more orange. And there, that's a better choice. So over time you will develop a better, um, better eye for picking, for choosing colors, um, after looking at reference images without having to go and color pick the, without having to pick the colors from the reference pictures. Okay, so I'm gonna start coloring. I'm gonna delete that thing because it looks horrible. So when I initially start coloring, I like to use this tool that's called in Photoshop a lasso tool. But most other programs would have a tool of some name like that. It's just a general selection tool. So I like selecting my big shapes with the lasso tool or any other tool that um, that the whatever program you're using has. And when I choose, I just will select all of these big pieces. Assalamu alaikum. All right. So when you're when you're selecting, you wanna just keep your um lines quick because I always end up messing them up if I try and go too slowly. You can always refine this shape afterwards. And the reason why I do the selection is because I then can use a brush with texture in it, which gives the overall nicer um overall a nicer finish to the picture but if i use if i use them actually let me uh let's do this for a section sec and i just want to show how difficult it can be to fill in a color without the with the texture brush without the selection because if you have something selected you can automatically stay within the lines but with texture brushes it is very hard to keep the you see how all this stuff is coming out of the lines and then you have to manually go and erase it all. Oops, that's a huge eraser. Um, but if I select it, then I can, of course I selected. Okay, if I select it, then I know I will automatically be staying within the boundaries of my selection. And so I can just do this. And it's a much quicker way of filling in. Although one thing I have to keep in mind is that the colors are not very accurate. I've got a weird pinkish shade that's coming into it. 
there is a slight pinkish touch to the stem. Why is that happening? There is this pinkish uh, color in the stem, but overall I'm going to choose a slightly less pink color to fill this in with, and then we can add the pink where it needs to be later on. Okay, and I'm going to name the layer. I tend to use a lot of layers because I like having everything separate, but it does, you can use less layers. It's not like a necessary thing. It's personal preference. If you experiment a bit, you'll find out whether more layers are working for you or less layers. Okay, the selection is a bit rough around the edges here, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I often just clean this up later. Uh, yeah, I will cut this section out though, that's weird. Um, with selections, you just have to be careful that you do not make your selections very rough because that will show in the final product. So just try and keep them smooth instead. Okay, um, now I'm actually gonna pick a color that I think will work for the cap. And when I'm choosing the color for the initial coloring, I choose something that is a bit, uh, a less saturated version. Why is it not doing anything? Okay, I think my uh, Photoshop is being glitchy. Okay, it's working now. So I like to choose a version that is slightly less saturated or less bright in colors than what the photo shows. So by the end of it, I have to keep in mind that I will be adding lighting and that will be affecting the colors. So if I start out with something that is say this saturated, then I add colors on top of, I add the lighting on top of that and you end up with something that is very unrealistic and very, very bright, more than it should be. So generally starting with colors that are slightly more faded, if you look at this, it's slightly, it's a slightly more faded version of the actual mushrooms color. Actually, I think this is slightly too faded. I'm gonna add a little more vibrancy to it. That's better. These these spots, by the way, are the yellow dots that the mushrooms have on their cap, which is not very visible. So I will zoom into the reference and show you. It's these little yellow, yeah, these little yellow dots over here. So for the ske for sketching that, I just slammed them down in black, and I will not be lessening those out. I will not be selecting them and filling them in separately because they are pretty easy to just paint in. Some stuff I like to paint in instead of selecting and then doing the type of fill that I did here because it helps with keeping it a more organic or natural feel. Because selecting that, selecting it does make it very crisp, which works for the main big shapes. But when I want smaller details, I just paint them in separately. I will go over the color for the stem really quick. It's a bit too bright. I don't like it. And for some reason, my brush is messing up a lot. Okay, now it's working again. There you go. I think that is a slightly better color. Yeah, it's it's more, it's less bright and that leaves me room for adding in the lighting afterward. Okay, so that's the first one done. And I, I'm not always very orderly with my layers, but this time I'm gonna group them and I'm gonna write it front mushroom so that I remember which one it is. And now I'm gonna do the one at the back. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I start with um, with the with the selection tool, and that became rough. Okay. So I have I always keep forgetting that going over it in small sections is easier, but sometimes selecting it gets kind of difficult. 
there you go and i just uh, do the big shapes not So this part is usually called doing the flat colors and it's flat colors because there are no details and there's no lighting. It's literally just colors. You just slam down colors and call it a day. So when you add the details, it's usually called rendering and then you add the lighting. But once again, with doing the, with adding the flat colors, you have to keep in mind where the light is coming from and what time of day it is, that kind of stuff, which will affect how your colors look uh, in the flat color stage. Okay, and I've got a stem. By the way, I did turn the opacity for my sketch down. That makes it easier to see um, the part I'm selecting. And let's name it stem. And then I make a new layer for the cap, which is not very necessary, but I like doing it. It helps me keep things separated. Actually, I'm gonna make the gills first. So when selecting for the gills, which is uh, this part of the mushroom, this under part of the cap is called the gills. So when I'm doing the gills from this angle, they are behind the stem. When I'm selecting something that is behind the stem, I, I select it with the lasso tool and then I just go into my layers and I it's control and then alt and you click on the layer with the stem and it automatically removes the stem from my selection. For the gills, for the color for the gills, I'm going to check over here. I can choose a slightly darker color because the cap will have um will be throwing a shadow on the gills. And here's another thing where you must keep in mind the lighting before you can before you can do the local colors. Because if, say for example, if I had light coming from this direction, if I had light coming from the right instead of the left, then the gills will be lit up by that light on this side. And let me just uh, on this side, they'll be lit up by the light over here, this intersection, because the light will be coming in from the side. So you need to know which, what direction your light is coming in from before you uh, put in the colors. I'm actually gonna make this color slightly darker because I think I had run into problems last when I painted when I made it too bright. Does anybody have any questions? Are you guys understanding? No questions? Okay. Okay, I'm going to name this one Gills. And then... Okay, now we can go and get the, the cap. When I'm selecting for the cap, I be a bit more careful about the edges than I was for the gill because the gills will be going behind the cap. And so if a little bit of them is coming into the portion that is covered by the cap, I do not pay too much attention to it because it'll be covered. But uh, for the gills, I make sure I select it carefully. Sorry, for the cap, I make sure I select it carefully so that uh, it is not, it, otherwise it leaves rough edges that looks very ugly. So here's the part that I was mentioning in the in the part that I was mentioning in the sketch. Um, the, about the, just give me a minute. Okay, the, remember in the sketch, I mentioned that the shape of this one at the back was very awkward and it was somewhere between carving up there and dipping down as it would in here. So this is the refined version of the sketch and the, the mushrooms that cap is dipping down as it would in this phase of their development where it's going like in this sort of loopish thing over here. Like you don't want to select. So I just thought I'd point out that this is what I was saying I would correct if I were had if I had more time to actually spend on the sketch. 
now that we do the thing and once you have selected the colors for the first one you can use the same for the other mushrooms i'll make this slightly darker on the side where the shadows would be and here i'm turning my sketch off to check as you can see there is gaps here because when you're using when you have the sketch on the line covers any gaps and you don't see them so i'm gonna cover them by turning the sketch back on and just increasing my selection along the outer edge of the sketch instead of the one inside um, You could also do this by manually painting it in. But I prefer selecting it instead. Another way you could also solve the same problem is by making the gills, which are underneath it, bigger. Assalamu alaikum. And I'm going to name this one Cap. And I'm going to turn on the sketch. Yeah, I actually just noticed there's a hole in the front one actually as well, which I missed. So I'm just gonna group these together and call them the back mushroom. Back mushroom, yes, the recording will be available. I will post it on YouTube afterwards. Um, where's the... I am using Photoshop. This is on Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, um, there are lots of other free um, painting programs that you can use as well. Okay, so in the previous one, I extended the cap to cover the gap between the gills and the cap. By the way, um, if anybody's unfamiliar with the terminology, this red part over here is the cap. This white part over here is the stem and this uh, this part on the inside is the gills, which are only visible when the mushroom is tilted away. If you want to see them on the actual photo, then you've got the, the cap, the stem, and the gills. Okay, so um, for this one where I see the gap, I'm actually going to extend the stem instead of the cap. Because the cap shape is pretty good and I don't want to mess it up. So I'm just going to pull the stem slightly more inside. And I'm not worried about it showing over the cap because I have them in a separate layer and I just kept the cap over the top of the stem. So if you turn off, you can see the stem is going past it. But since the cap is above, it covers it. Now if I turn the sketch off, I don't have a gap. You can see the edges are very rough, slightly around the edges here. And more on this part is rough. And these are more rough. But that is okay, I can fix it later on. For now, I am going to make the last mushroom. I will just move the front one ahead. Okay. This is a difficult one to do with the selection tool. I have a suggestion. Yes, I have heard of Procreate. Um, I think lots of people do use it on the iPad as well. I have never used Procreate. The only thing I have used is Photoshop, but I have heard lots of good reviews about Procreate. Jazakila for the suggestion. It is a good one. Um, yeah, another one that is also available, I don't think it's not free, but there's also Adobe Fresco, which is like, it is Photoshop with it is Photoshop with less versions basically, and it is for tablets specifically designed for tablets. So if you have an iPad or a tablet or anything, then Fresco is a good um, choice. It is lighter on this. There is no Photoshop for tablet, I don't think so. So you have to use Fresco then. This one is hard to select. I it took me very long the first time too. It has a very weird outline and that makes it hard to select. So I'm going, I'm selecting the, uh, the, the cap first. Can I please spell it? Yes, I can spell it. Adobe Fresco. I just put it in the chat.
Uh, I'm selecting the cap first for this one because it is easier. The rest is very difficult. Yeah. I'm actually very bad at the whole selecting thing, but it does work out pretty good. Better than trying to do it. It's sometimes easier to keep it more zoomed out when I'm trying to make difficult selections. I'm not sure how that works. I guess it is because I have to move my hand less. Okay, I think that's good enough for the cap. I'll adjust the rest <laughs> later. Uh, one thing I want to point out is it is very difficult at this stage to tell the mushroom in the front from the mushroom in the back without the sketch turned on. But that will be fixed later on as we refine the colors. Um, so here's one point I'm gonna I want to mention is if you look in your references, the the mushrooms in this stage of the development where they're kind of curving out on the sides are darker in the middle. And I'm not going to leave this for the more ad, um, the more advanced color refining that I do. I'm going to put it down here because this is something that is very easy to forget. And I'm not selecting or anything, but I am going to just uh, put in some darker color in the middle. And that also helps with the illusion of the shape. It feels like it's carving a little more if I can get them to follow the curve of the mushroom. And then it's lighter on the front. There's more of this whitish that is less red and more pinkish on the front and i'm also going to put that down in the in this stage i don't want to leave all of this which is very important for the this is what a fundamental according to me so adding details textures can go in the later stage but this i want to put down now okay that's good enough for now and this is the cap and then I'm going to select the gills and put in the gill color. Does anybody have any questions? The gills are also a very difficult shape to select. And I'm just kind of roughing it. And I'm going to cut some of it out over here. I do not like how much inside it is. Outside, so it sticks out way too much. The gills are also a very interesting color to pick because if you look um, at carefully at the references, you notice that they're sort of reddish on the outside by the time they join the caps and more whitish inside. The angle of our mushroom here is such that we'd be seeing both sections. So I'm going to start by putting the more whitish colored gills. And I'm going to add the reddish section later. So if you if I turn the cap off here, you'll see that a huge section of my gills are going all the way underneath the cap. But I'm not concerned about that because the cap will hide it anyway. Although one thing I will do is I will tidy the cap up a bit. It is coming past its boundaries into the gills. And I will send it back. So for this, I'm just using a normal hard eraser. I am not selecting for such a small thing. There is a reason on the edges. So to actually that much is, is enough. Okay, so we've got um the gills. If you turn the sketch off, you will see it all looks very ugly. But I'm not too much concerned about that because um, I can refine it later on. And now we go on to the stem. Let me name my layer. I'm being very polite and naming all of my layers. Sometimes I'm rather bad mannered and don't. But then I forget all of what my layers are. So. Uh, 
uh, the stem is hard because it curves and everything that curves is hard. So I'm going past the stem that I have sketched here. In fact, it's going past where it should even for mushroom. But um, I'm not too concerned about that part because it's all hidden behind the, the gills and the cap and everything. I just want to pick the color off of the one I already did for the stem. I don't like picking colors off of um, pictures, but from your own stuff is fine. Once again, keep in mind the direction of light. I'm going to make the one side of the stem slightly darker. So it's like a sort of, my light is coming from here. So the portion that's right over here is going to be darker because the cap will put a shadow. And we're going to call it stem. And that is the flat colors are basically done. And I'm going to start refining them. So when I when I start doing the hang on, let's put this in a group. And let's call it middle mushroom. So I'm going to start refining the biggest and I'm going to do some of it and then I'm going to switch to the pre-refined version and do the lighting. So when I want to start refining, I make a new layer. Hang on, I'm not sure if you guys saw that. So I'm going to make a new layer and then I'm going to clip it to my current one. And that means that anything I um, st st got stuff selected. Anything that I paint over this layer is now going to remain contained to the one that is beneath it. So if I'm painting on this layer 49, everything that I paint on layer 49 is going to remain, is only going to show where there's stuff in the cap one. So if I were to paint on the cap over here and then go to this one and paint with red, it will automatically display here. But if I erase the stuff that's below, then the stuff that's on top vanishes as well. Even though when I unclip it, you can see that it's still there. Let me delete that. Did that make sense? I think I explained that in a very bad way. I don't have a ridiculous amount of brushes, but the one I'm using um, for this stage, I think it's an oil textured brush. Yeah, it's a oil, it's a soft oil brush. So this, this, it's one of those um, basic type brushes that I think you should be able to find in most, something similar in most um, painting software, even if you don't have Photoshop. So to begin with, I'm actually going to just put down the yellow, the yellow spots. So I just uh, paint them in. I'm not selecting anything. It's a bit hard to see with the sketch, but. Just, oops, that was a huge razor. Just want to tidy the edges a little bit. One thing I like about doing these little details without um, selecting them beforehand is these rough edges. They're not smooth. They don't look like I selected them beforehand. They look more natural. Most of the time I go back and um, clean up the edges for the ones which I selected because these hard edges are not very realistic at all. And you want to have them more natural looking. So I usually go back and do that later. But painting the spots in at least is not very hard. I'm just going to turn the sketch off so I don't see them in a weird color. Have any of you done any sort of drawing or painting before? Or do you just like watching it? Thank you. 
One thing I'm going to quickly do is I see a few spots on the few spots on the cap. I just want to fill them in real quick because it looks very you go. I I I like to use a brush which um for the blocking for the selecting and putting in color. I like using a brush that has slight color fluctuations because it makes for a slightly textured look without much effort. But sometimes it gives weird colors and then you have to go and fix them. But thankfully it hasn't done anything much of that sort now. Okay. Um So for beginning with this, I'm going to um, add in the part of the middle of the cap that is slightly darker than the rest. It is very uh, slightly noticeable in this form, which is this current growth stage. If you look over here, it, which is one of the references that is in this phase of growth, you can see that just this section over here, I don't even know why it's the color is like that. This section over here is all that is slightly darker than the rest of this. So to emulate that, I'm just gonna have very, the angle here is slightly different and we'll be able to see slightly more of this dark spot. So I'm just going to add in a darker, slightly deeper red over the top here. I'm just gonna try and dodge the yellow spots, which are beneath it. I don't wanna paint those over. And building the texture of the mushrooms of this particular mushroom is not very complicated because they have a fairly smooth texture. Um, they don't have something that is ex extremely ridged. Um, they are, there's one more mushroom which has a very bumpy sort of texture. And here I'd made a, I don't have pictures of it, but like there's this one which has these sort of things spinning off the sides the entire time and that is more time consuming to paint than something like this one where it's more smooth so to start with i'm going to take a slightly lighter color and give the edges the lightish tone and i'm going to keep my sketch on for this because i did have a rough jotting down of the textures that I should be emulating. So that helps me stay on track. But I mean, the references can do that as well, if you would rather not have the sketch on. Are you guys enjoying it so far? Is there anything else you'd like me to talk about? I think learning how to build this texture is something that is very hard to show. So I'm mostly just making these small up and down kind of movements. And you don't want to do them too much because then it looks like the mushroom is bumpy. And it has taken, it took me quite a while to figure out how to paint this kind of texture. Hang on, let me show you guys the first mushroom I painted. I think it would be uh it would be fun to laugh over it. Uh here's the first mushroom I ever painted. I like to think I've improved a little bit at least. But uh as you can see the texture looks very much like they're tapeworms or something crawling up the sides and it is kind of disgusting. 
so hopefully i'm doing a better job at uh, painting mushrooms now so here at this point i'm basically just adding these slight slightly lighter and slightly darker tones up and down the the cap of the mushroom and i'm keeping the lighter part concentrated along the edges of the mushroom cap where it is lighter in the actual mushroom and i'm focusing the more darker part on the very top the round surface where it is actually more darker and if i was just painting a nondescript mushroom which was not like supposed to be any specific species i would probably not pay so much attention to where the lights and the darks are going but that is one thing in scientific illustration is you have to be careful of these kind of small minute differences that can that can take your illustration quite far from what the real thing actually is i think it's getting too light at this point so i'm going to choose a slightly less light color this part is the most time consuming i think but it is also the it's also a fairly interesting part because you can add so much texture and this is the part that really makes it look um you can make it as realistic or as unrealistic as you want it to be in this phase i'm not very good at photorealism yet because that requires many so many details which i'm not very good at but i can at least imply the textures properly so i'm just making these small up and down movements and i think this is too dark now because i want to keep the darks concentrated along the top i don't want it to come so down low you see i often keep on this eyedropper thing appears i'm picking the colors and then i adjust them from the top so that i can not end up too far from the starting color i'm doing a sketch off real quick so i can see how it's coming along we have around half an hour to go so i'm going to uh switch over to the stock real quick the stem i mean and show how i do the stem and then we can um switch turn to the lighting stage which i want to cover before the session ends i'm just trying to see if i can do a bit more of the cap before i do that and then in a second or two, in a minute, I will switch to the stem instead. Any questions so far? Any questions about the process in general, maybe not relating specifically to this piece? Like, how would I do something, if you have in mind? I'm switching to a slightly more whiter color for the very fringe, the very end, the uh, tips of the cap, where it is light, lighter in the thing. With with my illustrations, I am um, exaggerating the color differences slightly more than they actually are. And this is, I think, personal preference and how far you're willing to go and change the stuff from the real thing. I personally feel that this much um, exaggeration that I'm doing is not taking it out of the scientific accuracy. And it's more like in keeping it visually pleasing. But uh, I know a lot of other artists who do not um, push the color so much. And that's okay. It's like a personal preference thing. Okay, I'm going to switch to the stem real quick now so we can... cover the lighting in time as well. Okay. So 
So the stem has a very subtle texture, as you can see in the references even. There's, there's this very faint ridges or sort of like wood-like texture that goes along the sides. And this is something that is very um, distinct between different mushroom species. So it's something I do not want to exaggerate too much, but I want to try and portray it um, clearly. So I'm just going to choose a slightly darker color. And for the stem, I mostly just make straight lines. And the interplay of the dark straight lines and the light straight lines gives off this sort of woodish texture. I like building it up slowly, so it's very hard to see anything at all changing, but I would much rather do it in steps. So like I'll do a first round, which has very little visible difference, but then I'll go over it again, slightly exaggerating each time. And that builds up to a more gradual, it keeps the texture more realistic i think you see what i'm talking about now you can see i made a slightly darker color than i had in the first round and i'm increasing the straight lines that i'm adding i'm concentrating the straight lines on the right side because my light source is from the left and so it is easier to add lighting effects if you've already got a more concentrated light on the left side so this is basically, it's a, if, there, if there would be ridges in the stem, the light would catch those ridges and the shadow would be on the opposite side. And that again ties into how I was saying that you must keep the lighting of your piece in mind before you begin or as you're planning it out so that you're not, um, so that all the subtle textures that you add are in accordance with your light source. Otherwise it can look very wonky. It looks very unharmonious that way. So now I've chosen a slightly lighter color for the whites, but mostly I'm not pushing the light, the white parts too much, which are lighter than the base stem color. I want to instead push the darks so that when I add the lighting, it does not become too bright because I chose a slightly brighter color to begin with before I'm doing the texture. These are all small things that you will um, pick up as you make stuff that, okay, if I'm choosing a lighter color to begin with, I must add texture, which is darker and leave the lighter part for when I do the lighting. Or, okay, if I chose a darker color to begin with, then I must have lighter texture. I think this part as a little, the whole adding texture and details, there's very little that can be dot about it and you can pick up these techniques from watching other people that is what i did i used to watch speed paints a lot on youtube like time lapses of people painting and i just pick up the little techniques that they use that would um that they would use in their workflow and the ones that i like just i would use them and sometimes it's also subconsciously you pick up the techniques and integrate them in your workflow but watching others do their thing, um, whether it be speed paints or in person or whatever, I think is a good way to learn these subtle texturing and detailing techniques. I'm going back to the lighter color now and just adding it in between the darks where it would be slightly raised off the surface of the stem and the light would be catching it. And I'm gonna zoom out and just turn it off and on again. And just, it helps me see what is wrong about it. Like here, I can see that it's very shaky. There are no clear defined lines. The pattern is very erratic and it just looks weird, but uh, we can make that work in a second. I start out with a bigger brush and I also go to a smaller brush as I move, uh, add more details to the texture because the stem will not have very thick ridges. They're very fine. So you want to keep a thin brush and just add them in. I try to avoid zooming in too much, even in this stage of adding details, because it is very easy to um, 
get lost adding too many details to the same portion and when, by the time you step back you realize that the entire thing looks a mess but the one portion you're working on looks amazing and you just conveniently forgot about the rest of it so keeping it zoomed out i think helps because you keep an eye on the general progress of it and it also helps in just keeping the texture loose you don't want to add unnecessary detail because nobody is going to be zooming into this level and seeing my picture so if i look at it at this level and i'm like okay let's add a ridge here and a ridge here and then let's switch to light and add a ridge here and a ridge here and a ridge here by the time you zoom out you can't even see what i did so keep it zoomed out helps with not adding too many unnecessary details i guess does that make sense at all Okay, I'll switch over in a minute or two to the lighting phase because we are uh, don't have a lot of time. I'm glad that makes sense. <laughs> it sounded like I said that in a very unclear way. So now I'm trying to build up the general shape of the shadow here as well. I'm not sure if you guys can notice it, but I'm building the lighter streaks in this sort of downward trend over here. And I'm uh, increasing the dark streaks up here. And that is because since my light is coming from above in this sort of leftward direction, uh, rightward direction from the left, you can see how here the cap would be catching the light and casting shadow over here. So by the time I get around to adding the shadow, I want to make sure that I have enough of these darks over here. And um, I would if I would spend more time building out the texture over here, but I think this will have to do for now. And I'll um, do the final thing that I will do for the coloring stage. And then I'll go to the lighting stage, which is my favorite, by the way. I love lighting. I add very dramatic lighting, and I think that is probably very scientifically inaccurate, but. Okay, I'm just going to add another layer above the texture. And I'm gonna choose a sort of dark bluish color. Okay, and I'm gonna grab this brush. This is just a soft brush with pressure the opacity set to pen pressure so i can adjust that and i'm just gonna paint in some of the blue okay. just some blue over here and then i'm gonna change the blending mode so the blending mode is how the 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 layer that you're on interacts with the layer beneath it so this purple that i'm adding in or this blue actually it's supposed to be blue not purple um the blending mode will dictate how it interacts with the layer below it so if i set it to normal you will see that it is this huge solid blue mess but when i make it soft light the texture beneath it is coming through still and that is because the blending mode is allowing it so there are lots of different blending modes you can scroll through them and you'll get a idea you can just experiment with them but um, soft light and is okay for what I'm looking for. So this is basically the shadow that I'm adding. And it looks very weird because um, the, the stem is not um, textured enough for the shadow to appear very realistic. But this part, I like adding in the coloring stage instead of the lighting. Because according to me, this is not a part of adding the light. This is the local shadows. If the light is coming from here, it, there's bound to be a shadow here. So this is, I mean, this can, this part of the process is also very um, personal preference-ish. And you could go about in a different order. I know lots of people go about in a different order from what I do. I do it in a different way from others. And if you just experiment, you figure out like whether you'd rather complete the texture part first or you rather add in the shadows as you're going with the texturing part and do the lighting later. 
Oh, we only have like 15 minutes left, so I'm gonna go to the lighting stage now. Okay, in this one I have added in the but there's one part that I forgot actually was showing how I did the grass, which is already done in the lighting stage. So I'll quickly show you how I did that because I said I would. So I'm gonna choose a since I don't want to paint detailed grass because that is not the point of this illustration. I'm just using a brush that basically makes lines up and down. Uh, not in blue though. Let me just delete it. So I'm going to choose the same green color as this. And this is actually not the brush I'm looking for. I think this is it. I am not very organized with my brushes, so. So basically I'm just looking for a brush that gives me a good up and down line effect, which can uh, mimic the pattern of a grass, grassy field blade, grass blades, blades of grass without it being detailed. I don't want it to be too detailed. And that's because the grass here is more just of a filler. It's making the environment look real and is blending in the the mushroom stems with the surroundings. So if I, I don't want to spend too much time painting super realistic grass because it doesn't matter. It's not like the main thing. So I'm just gonna grab the colors which I've already set down in my background. And I'm gonna give it like some slightly more greenish tones and some slightly brownish and just basically fill in these little streaks that from a distance would look like grass. And if I had more time, I'd refine this more and not leave it like how it is, which is very blocky and weird. And then I also use these. Um, I like using this brush that just smatters in leaves. Where did it go? I don't know if I can find it, but I won't spend too much time if I can't. I really can't remember which one I used. Uh, maybe it was this one. Well, anyway, so I, li I like using little um, leaf brushes basically, and just put some along the side. I wonder if this one is it. No. Maybe it's this one. Maybe it's this one. Maybe it's this one. Maybe it's this one. Well, anyway, let's move on to the lighting because I'm running late. So I will just show you the plants that I was talking about is these little, these little specks over here. They don't look a whole lot like plants when you zoom in. They look like little flecks, just like how the grass looks like up and on lines. But once again, it is not what it looks like when zoomed in that matters because your viewers will not be zooming into every inch of your picture and checking what it looks like so as long as you can get if i zoom out then this looks like a fairly grassish weeds and general it just must look like foliage because i just want to blend in the the stalks of the stalks of the mushrooms anyway let's uh, start on the lighting so to begin with, this picture is lacking contrast. If I switch to black and white, you can see everything is just a shade of gray. The light parts are just gray. The black part, the dark parts, the shadow parts are just gray. So I'm gonna start by fixing that on an individual mushroom level. I add in an adjustment layer. If you do not, I'm, I'm pretty sure most painting softwares have adjustment layers. But if you do not have adjustment layers, you can always just duplicate the layer and adjust its contrast separately. I, um, I'm going to clip the layer, which is a mushroom. I'm going to do the front one first. Okay. And I'm just going to increase, I'm going to make the light portion slightly brighter. 
and the dark portion slightly darker, slightly, not that much. That one is way too much. Just slightly. I'm gonna make the white portion slightly brighter. And um, if you turn it off, you can see how that looks more flat and this has given it a bit more um, vibrancy. I'm gonna make the dark slightly less dark. It's way too much, this is better, there you go. And I'm gonna repeat this for the next mushroom as well. Any questions so far? So I'm gonna make the dark portion slightly darker. I'm pushing that a bit more on the mushroom at the back which had slightly less dark darks than the one at the front. The shadow portions were slightly less dark than the one at the front. And there you go, that looks a bit more alive now. And now the one at the back looks even more dead in comparison. So let's give it some contrast. Contrast is a very fine, um, is a very fine line between pushing it too much and pushing just enough. And a good way to check, I think, is going in black and white mode. Because when you take away the, the colors that interfere with our, um, if you take, yeah, perception. If you take away the colors that, um, then we can see, I'll just make it black and white. So you can tell without the colors that um, how dark your blacks actually are, as opposed to what they look. So if you turn, Let's turn this one off, which I think is showing a good comparison. You can see how the grays, if I turn it in color, then it does not look very bad. But if I go into black and white, you can see how everything is just a shade of gray. This portion, which is supposed to be catching the sunlight is also gray, as is the portion which is supposed to be in shadow. But as soon as you up that contrast, you can see this really looks like it has shadow. This looks like it has more light and it adds a lot of volume as well. It makes it look less two dimensional and more 3D and more something that could be in the real world, if that makes sense. So this is um, the first fix that I do. Sometimes I do these while I'm going, hang on, let me get out of black and white mode. Sometimes I do these as I'm painting, if I notice that a particular portion is looking very dull, then I will adjust my um, colors as I'm going. But sometimes you only notice these once you're done the entire detailed rendering part. And then you can zoom out, take a look at the entire picture, go into black and white and do these final tweaks and all that before you add in the main light source like I did here with the sunbeams. So I'm also gonna adjust the colors slightly. I, I like experimenting with this step with this after I'm done the entire painting, uh, the, the detailed texturing part, I like pulling up some adjustment layers, just messing with the colors as a whole and experimenting. And often you find stuff that works, that looks nicer. And you can um, improve, you can just experiment. And if, if you don't like it, then just undo it. I will make this slightly less pink. Let's begin very pink. It's all just a subtle game of colors. You just adjust it how you like it. There's no much right uh, right or wrong at this point because this you will all count as the the influence of daylight or evening light or whatever light you have and you won't you it's hard to get i mean this much um messing with the colors can just be artistic freedom it might not be the most scientifically accurate but it's it's a grace that is okay you can take the grace you can take the risk now I'm gonna add in the light beams, which is the most fun part ever. I'm gonna choose a soft brush with opacity set to pressure. Before I do that, I just wanna exclude the box on the side because that looks weird if that becomes brighter. So that's just because I'm painting in a more card format. So there's supposed to be the information on the side and I don't want the light drills to be going all the way behind it. So at this point, it looks ugly, but 
but I'm just gonna loosely brush on where I want the light to shine. And uh, I mentioned earlier that I want it to be like sort of light beams through a depot forest or something like that. So I'm just really pushing it as sort of depot light. It's not steady. They're not bright. They're not in the open sunlight. Mushrooms hardly ever are. So, and then I'm quickly going to change the blending mode. This is color dodge. Um, you have it is very nice. It is a very interesting color mode because it makes the colors pop and is all bright and vibrant. But you have to be careful when using color dodge because it is very easy to go overboard with it, and then it stuff looks horrible instead of nice. I am very prone to going overboard with color dodge. So I try to be careful. I think we're going to end up a few minutes above half past four. I hope nobody's in a hurry. So at this point, I am not very careful about where, as you can see, the, the, there's a bit of an issue that comes in with slamming the color dodge on at the top. Um, magically, my gills are glowing. At the end of the day, it is still a painting and nothing real. And so as soon as I put light on top, the shadow of the gills magically vanishes. So at this point, I just take the eraser and erase away my light beams from underneath the gills because they should be in the shadow and not glowing. I wanted to show how I do the gills, but um, there's no time for that now. So maybe next time. Yeah, because we ended up starting a little later. But that's okay. Maybe I can cover it in the future sometime. Um, there's a bit of an unrealistic lighting going on here because the sun is magically stronger on the ground than up in the sky. So let's fix that. I'm going to zoom out a bit because it's easier to do it that way. I w I'm hoping to be able to continue doing these on a regular basis, not on Zoom, but um, I will be live streaming them on Twitch. Have you guys ever heard of Twitch? Twitch is like a live streaming platform where you can just live stream. And it's easier to use than Zoom because there are no links and no meetings and no schedules. And um, you can just tune in anytime you want and watch the live stream. And then I can also post recordings for those on YouTube. So I'm hoping to be able to continue streaming on a regular basis on Twitch. I will post the link to my channel in the chat. So if anybody is interested, you can go and subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified um, whenever I do stream. The, the, this light is looking very weird. And I cannot figure out why. I think it's too harsh. So I'm going to just break up the shape of it. Would you guys be interested in watching streams if I did them on a regular basis? So also the painting process, similar to the one I did today, but a little more in depth because I have more time to go over um, projects. And since it will be on recurring, I can focus on working on longer projects as well. Okay, um, I think I'm okay. I'm pleased with how the light rays are coming. I'm just going to add a little bit more light on the mushrooms themselves. I'm gonna lower the opacity of my brush so that it's more gentle and not so bright. And just add that in. Uh, once again, you have to be careful to erase it off from the shadow parts because that makes them look weird. So just make sure your um, sun rays don't end up illuminating the shadow. And then for the part that is completely unnecessary and is a dramaticism, but that looks very nice, I add sparkly lights. If you notice in the final, it has these little sparkle thingies. So there's a brush here somewhere, which is very good for adding them. 
I think this is it. No, this is not it. I always forget where the brush is. But I'll find it in a second. I think this is it. Yep, there you go. A little sparkly brush. And this is the most unrealistic element ever because um, sunlight does not have magical glittery sparkly thingies, but it looks cool. And I just sprinkle them lightly throughout the picture. I don't want to make it too heavy. And the color mode, I make it color dodge. So it is bright, but I turn the opacity down. So I want them very faint. I don't want them. In fact, I'm going to, you would be more interested in live streams. That's cool. I will post my, um. why is my thing not switching to razor? I will post the link to my um Twitch channel in the chat in just a second. And you can give me a subscribe. You can subscribe to me there. And whenever I do stream, you can just tune in. Tune in. A downside to Twitch is that the recordings will only stay for 14 days, but I will post them onto my YouTube channel afterwards. So if you don't manage to catch the live streams, you will still be able to see them on YouTube, like the recording for this one. Okay, I think this is okay. Before I lower the opacity, I'm going to add a glow. This is a special effect in Photoshop, and this just makes it even more unrealistic than it already was. I'm just going to choose this sort of color. It just adds a slightly more interesting effect to it. I like how it turns out. And then I'm just going to drop the opacity very low because you do not want sparkles messing with it. And there it is. So this is the final product. Um, given more time, I would have tweaked with it more, obviously. And I could not expand upon all the the um the topics I wanted to, such as painting the gills. And I didn't have much time to do the sketches properly. But um I think we covered good ground. Did you guys enjoy the did you guys enjoy the session? Um, I'm going to post URLs here. Twitch profile. And let me just... Jazakillah. Uh, I will post my youtube url as well so the recording will be the recording i'll post on i'll upload it on youtube i'm not sure how i can contact you guys again did you guys get hold of did you guys come through um instagram or where anyway i did share the link to my youtube in the same place where you would have come to this um class from so the youtube will be there so um, here's the link to my YouTube channel as well. YouTube channel. Okay. So I'll upload the recording on the YouTube and hopefully I can stream in the future on Twitch. I think I just broke my Photoshop, which is doing some weird things now. There you go. Okay. Okay, I think um, we'll call it a wrap then. Okay. Um, I will also post my Instagram URL. Um, I will, if I do, whenever I stream in the future, I will be um, posting it beforehand to my Instagram so you know um, when I will be going live next. And we can stay in touch over there. And I'll also post when the, the recording goes live if any of you would like to catch up to it later.
there's the Instagram. Does anybody have any other questions before we close it up? So if there are no questions, uh, should we wrap up then? Jazakumullah khairan for attending. Assalamu alaikum.